Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the Filipina Journal. I'm Joy Rivera Dodds. Well, despite the numerous challenge we face as a people, the Filipinos still have a lot to be thankful for such as um, family, a rich cultural heritage, and the passion of some people who try to keep our cultural heritage alive. Joining us today to talk about culture, traditions, um, pre-Filipino writing, at marami pa pong iba, is Christian Kabuhay of the Filipino Unconference. Thank Christian, you. thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Well, I stress on unconference because it's parang undo, untie, unconference. Why unconference? I mean, I think because we, we have to, a lot of things we have to unlearn, mm -hmm. right? You know, whether it's bad habits, uh, bad education, bad manners, so things that we kind of have to take a step back and see, uh, you know, what can we, what can we unlearn so that we can learn? Uh, the purpose of the event was to kind of have the conversations that are usually either taboo Mm -hmm. or that just aren't brought up in you know mainstream events so is unconference an organization as well uh yeah it's a it's a loose organization mm -hmm. yeah, i mean it's just uh myself and two other people and you know we were just doing events and mm -hmm. we were just kind of complaining on like why this why that and mm -hmm. it was ultimately well why don't we just do it then you know just keep complaining been complaining for years and mm -hmm. why don't we just go ahead and do something and create our own event right so how did it get started and how long has this been around? So around um, uh, May of earlier this year. Hmm, um, very young. Yeah, very young. Mm -hmm. So some uh, colleagues of, of mine, Joe of Bayani Art and Ray of Amalaya Designs, mm -hmm. we were doing an event and mm -hmm. we were freezing in, in the cold and you know it, we were just complaining, complaining to each other. And so we thought that, God, we should just do our own event. And what would we have? You know, we wanted to have an event that that where we could have it where it is uh, beneficial to the attendees, the vendors, as well as the, the producers. And when I say benefits, you know, beneficial to, you know, culturally, mm -hmm. um, as well as economically. I mean, because not everyone can afford to go to a an academic conference, you know, it costs money, it's far, usually it's during the middle of the day when people have school or work. Um, for vendor fees, you know, you have to pay hundreds of dollars to take part of these festivals and the ones that can only afford those are the bigger corporate companies and a lot of them you know they can provide you know the the money but then what benefit do they bring to the cultural festival you know so the ones that can such as myself the artists and the culture bearers they can't afford to pay four or five hundred dollars for a booth and you know so we decided that there has to be something in between so we put a lot of trust in the community that, you know, we put on this event, which, you know, is 100% donation based. You could uh, pay if you can, if you can't, then that's fine either. So, and how did the community receive this concept? It's pretty new. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was kind of confusing at first because, mm -hmm. you know, in addition to, you know, the, the uh, economic structure, mm -hmm. there was also a, a loose schedule right mm -hmm. so you know we have our filipino time right mm -hmm. so you know we had to kind of uh work around that where you know we're going to have these topics but then we also wanted to have some free time where people can come and um discuss their own topics as well you know so it wasn't just um people up on a platform just talking and talking mm -hmm. we wanted a two-way communication and also get people in the audience to come up and you know uh give benefit as well to the content so how did you structure it if it's you know it sounds like just a natural ebb and flow yes so how did people register and then how did you structure the whole it was it a one day yeah it was event? just one day mm -hmm. yeah so it was just one day i mean the structure with, with now what's great with technology mm -hmm. um you could do things by yourself so you just you know use an online registration you know of course through social media your websites your mailing list and uh, I mean, it is a lot of uh, say networking. So the people that you know, and it, they pass it on as well to um, like-minded people. So um, it does seem challenging and it was challenging. There's a lot of um, things that, uh, that we learn that mm -hmm. what we could do better next time when we have this next year. And, uh, but I, I think that the biggest lesson is that yes, it is possible to put something like this. And uh, it is good to you know, empower yourself and your community. 
So according to the attendees, what was their biggest takeaway? And tell us about the journey, yeah. finding a place, you know. Yeah. So the journey was, uh, the journey of, of finding the place. The original concept was I wanted to have it at a public place, mm -hmm. just like the old days, where you would just gather in a public area, be in a circle to discuss the topics. Parang town hall meetings exactly. sa barangay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But here in the U.S., it was, it was kind of difficult because you have permits we have unpredictable weather. You know, I wanted to have it at a beach where at the beach then we would put these bamboo poles around to mm -hmm. make a circle with a flag. But, you know, the, the, our beaches here are cold, you know, or you need, you know, like I said, you need permits. And mm -hmm. how will some people get there, you know, without, without a car? Because we wanted it to be as accessible as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up uh, choosing Fort Mason. You know that we knew that it wasn't that accessible, mm -hmm. but um, the price was good. Um, and uh, through carpooling, you know, people could get there. And plus it was small, that kind of allowed us to uh, experiment, you know, make mistakes and then uh, learn from it on the next one. And what did you learn that you would implement in next year's unconference? The number one takeaway, I think, is uh, having a uh, team of volunteers. Um, and I myself um, believe that you know we should uh, be able to pay the speakers at least mm -hmm. pay for their parking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, feed them lunch. So those you know those are minimal things which I think that um, we want to do next time. And whether uh, you know there were other people approaching us much later or when it was closed that hey we want to sponsor that mm -hmm. aren't you know these big corporations but as individual contributors or small businesses that wanted to take part of it. But um, it is kind of like a, a, of a manpower or a people power um, uh, situation that you need somebody to be at the front to register people and greet, uh, you know, but we were kind of like running around, mm -hmm. setting up, it was kind of challenging. Trying to do everything all at once. Exactly, exactly. And this was just recently, right? Yes, Kailangya? it was on the 14th. So how was it like? Who were your speakers? Who were your, yes. did you have vendors? Was it yes. like a, an, a bazaar type? It was, it was mm -hmm. a, um, this is probably maybe the third or fourth event that I had like this. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, those ones kind of led to this uh, version of, of the event. Mm -hmm. But the, the vendors we had, you know, um, curated vendors. So they were all cultural uh, vendors, handmade small businesses. Uh, the speakers, we had people talking about um, small business I mean, like, for example, I've seen, like, um, see Dado talk mm -hmm. a lot, right? He's really great and inspiring, but what about the other folks that, you know, we may not be able to get to that level, the reality? You know, who is someone that, you know, we can relate to more? I can relate to the guy that um, is selling T-shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, see Joseph that opened a Filipino martial arts school. Mm -hmm. So those are the guys that um, we had speak. We also had a workshop on uh, indigenous uh, pre-Filipino tattooing as well as Hilot. And so it was, it, was, it, was, it was very interesting. We had you know, a group of students from the Wright Institute talk about um, colonial mentality from a psychological point of view as well. I will ask you about the Hilot and mm -hmm. the pre-Filipino tattooing and the psychologists later on, ha? Huh? Sure. Kwentohan mo pa kami. Sige. Um, before we go on break, just briefly elaborate on the four Ds that um, unconference goes by. Yeah, so we had, if I remember it, so we had uh, disrupt. Mm -hmm. So disrupt uh, meaning that to change things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, things, you know, because we get used to um, the, the process, you know, we get relaxed. And without that, you know, we don't really get to innovate if we don't disrupt things. Whether you break things, come up with new ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so the other D is uh, discuss. Mm -hmm. We want it to create an environment where people can and can talk. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, talk about these things because a lot of times we're just, um, you know, whether it's a networking, uh, we're just drinking and eating, but mm -hmm. you know, we rarely get to discuss things in depth. And then we have disseminate. Yeah, so disseminate also is then once we get this information, then how do we spread it out, right? Whether it's just re beyond reposting something on Facebook mm -hmm. or retweeting, how do we get it out to the community face to face? And then the last one is do. And that's the ultimate, you know, D. You know, how do you actually take action? Right. After you see the speakers, you say, yes, right. I'm inspired. But mm -hmm. then, then what? What Hindi do you do? Salita. Exactly. <laughs> so then what do you do after that? The next day Very or the night when you come home? Well, let's talk more about this. When we return, we just have to pause for a break. Okay, ladies.
Did you receive one of these today? HICAP is a state-sponsored, volunteer-supported program that provides free counseling to people with Medicare. HICAP is administered by the California Department of Aging. And remember, keep health care costs from growing. Report suspected Medicare fraud to HICAP or their partner, the Senior Medicare Patrol. The Senior Medicare Patrol, or SMP, is federally funded. What do your fake fashion say about you? That fake bracelet? That fake scarf? That fake purse? They say... I'm a phony. They also say... I support child labor. They say... I give money to the gangs and criminal organizations behind the operation. And what about you? Those fake sneakers? That fake watch? They say... I'm a phony. And that fake cologne? It could contain harmful chemicals. So we could say... I'm gonna make myself sick. And the counterfeit medicine you bought online for your dad? It could say... I'm sending my dad to the ER. So you, the phony. And you, the phony. Isn't it time you got real? Fake products do real damage with real consequences. Get real. Protect yourself. Buy from legitimate sources. Go to ncpc.org. with Christian Kabuhay of Filipino Unconference. So Christian, yung topics nyo at the Unconference, um, the pre-Filipino tattoo talk and demo, what yes. was that about? So my, uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Lane Wilkin, he's from Las Vegas, and he is one of the remaining um, traditional uh, practitioners of the, the batok, which is uh, the tattoo. You may have heard of uh, si Wang Od of uh, Kalinga, you know, she's the the oldest tattoo mm -hmm. artist or practitioner mm -hmm. maybe in the world so um, he is um, following that tradition and he gave a talk um, not just about um, uh, how to tattoo or you know mm -hmm. those types of things but give the context between the designs and what they meant and what the context was and how it relates through uh, Southeast Asia and through what we call Polynesia so it was, a, it was a wide range of, um, of, of topics because it just opens up the discussion. He could have, his talk was over an hour, could have gone for It sounds the whole overwhelming. Day. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, especially if the first time you hear it, then mm -hmm. it, you, sometimes you get angry because you why? say, why, why didn't, am I only hearing this now, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes, you know, I, I get people, they walk up to me, you know, they're probably in their 50s. They's, in, in a festival, they say, why did not, I learned that in school, mm -hmm. you, know? you know, I went to UP and they didn't That's teach me right. that. They only teach me uh, English and economic mm -hmm. and all these Western things, right. right? I learned Greek mythology, but I never learned about our mm -hmm. own folklore and mythology and what mm -hmm. the context was, right? You know, they, they would teach about like the, uh, you know, like Malakas and Maganda, right? Coming mm -hmm. for the bamboo. But then what was the context from that, right? The context of that was it was actually a canoe. Oh. See, and they line the canoe with bamboo. So I mean, th there's a whole I didn't know there's that. a whole mm -hmm. range of things that you know, and, and the, you have to study like things that are outside the country, outside mm -hmm. the Philippines to get that context, because sharing of information, we are seafaring people, right? Mm -hmm. So there was no separation between say Indonesia, say Samoa, the Philippines, and you know they're all we're all neighbors. How can we start learning about these? I mean, there's 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 books out there uh, mm -hmm. that you can learn. Um, but like like uh, one is um, uh, uh, Filipino tattoos, ancient to modern, mm -hmm. and that is actually more about the context of the the designs and their relation to the the geographical region. Um, so that's one book. I mean, there's there's. Uh, only a few out there, it's, mm -hmm. and that's a problem. A lot of the books that are written, they are written from a Western lens. Mm -hmm. So whether it's you know 100 years old from the Spanish friars, right, or then it'll be an academic book, but then it doesn't take into account of you know the 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 context of the people. I mean, I learned a lot mm -hmm. of my like history and context from Renato Constantino books. Hmm. Christian, why pre-Filipino? I use it because I used this to say Filipino tattoos or Filipino mm -hmm. script, and then they say, ah, okay, and then they'll walk away. But when you mm -hmm. say pre-Filipino, people like go, huh? What's mm -hmm. that? Bakit? Ano yan? 
right? They'll mm-hmm. say that. And then because they'll even ask, like, well, weren't we, who were we then before we were Filipino? Right. And that's the question. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't have the answers, mm-hmm. but let's talk about it. So let's explore that because a lot of our traditions, we were, um, you know, uh, illiterate people before the Spanish came. You know, mm-hmm. we weren't savages. You know, we had our traditions, we had our technology. So we had all of these great things, but we just don't know about it. And uh, a lot of us, we think that everything began when the Spanish came, right, Mm -hmm. in the 1500s. But, you know, that's not true. And the Baybayin is what it's called, right? The the real Filipino alphabet? Yeah, it's When did we start losing it? Well, we started, I mean, ironically, you know, Mm -hmm. when when, when the Spanish came, you know, they they said that, um, they documented that um, everyone was pretty much literate from Mm -hmm. man, woman, and child. So, I mean, when they came, I mean, obviously, they, they studied it as well because the, the supposed first book in the Philippines, the Doctrina Christiana, mm-hmm. had Baybayin in it. Mm-hmm. So that the ones that only can read in Baybayin mm-hmm. can be converted to become Christians. But after that, you know, eventually it was phased out because of the Roman alphabet. If I may ask, yes. what's on your shirt? Is that by Bayin? Yes, it is. So this is like my logo that I mm-hmm. use for, for myself. Mm-hmm. So this is the Ka. Mm-hmm. And as you know, ka is is an important word within our 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 language, right? And it's also you know you see the ka sign. This is the first character that I saw when I was a kid when I discovered the script, mm-hmm. looking at the Katipunan flag, and it also represents my you know last name Kabuai. Mm-hmm. But the popular theory is you know from a linguistic you know standpoint, it's it's a prefix that you know sort of unites a word, right? So then you add it to um to words, say so you get like. You know, kalahasan, right? Or, you know, hmm. kapamilya, or you know, kalayaan. You know, those words, kapayapaan. But one theory is that there are two rivers, mm-hmm. two sides, and this it's right here bridge. bridge connects them. So and then I also have the calligraphy pen mm-hmm. representing art, and the Chris sword, which is a sword um, from the southern Philippines mm-hmm. that represents the struggle. So it's like the duality Very of nice. the art and the struggle. Christian, if somebody were to have a tattoo and mm-hmm. gusto nila yung um, alibata or baybayin, but they need to know if it's accurate. Kasi madaming practitioners, if you call it that, yes. it might be wrong and it's mm-hmm. there, it's forever. Mm-hmm. How do they go about that? I think they have to study it because usually the, the process is they'll go online, they'll go to Google, mm-hmm. and then they'll look at a chart that's old or wrong Mm -hmm. or they'll go to an online translator but then they don't know the language they'll type in for example um they'll type in hope right Mm -hmm. and then it'll it'll show you the characters h-o-p-e but then you should translate it to a philippine language first so Mm -hmm. a lot of those programs they don't have that context and then a lot of the people then don't even know how to speak any of the languages Mm -hmm. let alone you know tagalog and that's their parents probably came from you know, the Ilohos or mm-hmm. Visaya, so, you know, they don't know that right. either. Right. So, um, you know, my, my, my suggestion is, uh, one, to ask, ask people around your family first. Can they ask you? They can ask me, uh-huh. but I always turn them back, talk to your family first, mm-hmm. because then you will get those stories. It can open mm-hmm. up conversations, because mm-hmm. get, I get emails every day. Hey, could you translate this for me? You know, um, I don't know how to translate, you know, the language, because mm-hmm. first there's two steps. First is the language, mm-hmm. and then you translate it to the script. So the language one is the hardest part. So my, my, my point to them is that if you don't know the language, right. you know, you can study it. You know, if you're in Alabama, you don't mm-hmm. know anyone, okay, you know, you can go online or, you know, I'll help you. But if you have a relative, mm-hmm. a Lola, a Tita, your parents, you know, ask them first. Nice. We'll talk more about this later and you'll probably demonstrate also. Yes. Um, let's talk about Hilot. Yes. Um, somebody spoke about Hilot at the unconference. Yes, uh, my friend uh, Jasmine Esguera. Mm-hmm. She is a. She's also a. Um, she mixes um, uh, East and West practices mm-hmm. healing. So she's also a, uh, a chiropractor, licensed chiropractor. But then she also has um, practice Hilot that she inherited from her Lola, and a lot of our traditions, you know, they're passed on right. from our from our grandparents, and then to our parents, and then hopefully to us. Is there a spiritual level to Hilot? Oh, yes, definitely. There mm-hmm. is. I mean, there, there, there's even a spiritual aspect to, to the tattooing as well. It was done really? as a ritual. 
Hmm. So, I mean, there, there is a lot of our um, indigenous practices, there was, you know, a spiritual um, aspect to it, whether it's animist or some other higher power. And three other topics that you had, which we could talk about briefly, um, the psychologists, they talked about our habits, which we probably have to unlearn. What are yes. those? Um, I mean, colonial mentality. I mean, mm -hmm. it's obvious, you know, it, it's unconscious because it's so deep in our minds that state side <laughs> exactly or like or it could be like um you know little comments like mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. that to a baby to a mm -hmm. kid you say that to a kid and what mm -hmm. does that do to them psychologically mm -hmm. or pinching their nose so mm -hmm. they won't be pango, right so what does that do to the mm -hmm. kids psychologically right. at a young age so those are the things that we talked about and then you also had um entrepreneurs yes bayani art yes we how have, how is the cultural aspect of this so the, the cultural aspect of it is is you know how to uh make a business and support yourself and your family um with cultural products that's a challenge because uh one you're open to a market where filipinos aren't really known so that is a challenge so you have to educate as well as sell as well and before we go on break we'd have to do your um calligraphy is that how you call it after yes. the break um, lastly the jam so you also had indigenous music yes so uh, we have uh, you know we had a lot of my friends you know a lot of us play and do martial arts and all of these things so you know we had some kulintang and mm -hmm. agongs and just play music and yeah you know, just had a jam freestyle the unconference has to be on camp para ma share niyo din sa amin lahat. Oh yeah, I have, I have some videos. <laughs> yeah, I can share with you. Uh -oh. We have to pause for another break, so don't go away. Madami pa pong pag-uusapan. I'm Eric Compton, professional golfer. I'm Sam. I play pro soccer. I'm Eric. I play basketball. We are all alive and healthy today because people chose to be organ donors. You too can donate life. Currently, there are more than 123,000 men, women, and children waiting for an organ transplant. I made a difference and became a kidney donor. You can donate life too. You have the power to donate life. Visit donatelife.net. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed as our nation is with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be, with the high purpose to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all. this problem of re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. natin si Christian at ngayon naman pag-uusapan natin ang baybayin. Christian, um, what are these? Yeah, so these are uh, my wide range of tools. These are just some of them. I mean, the the tool set, because traditionally we, we wrote baybayin on bamboo. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't write it, we scratched it. So on green bamboo. Um, the only ones that are still writing it are the mangyans in Mindoro. Mm -hmm. So they use it to write their uh, ambahans. So now, you know, myself and my colleagues are trying to create these uh, new traditions, right? And using things that are indigenous to the Philippines, but also keeping in mind the mix of cultures, you know, from, mm -hmm. the, the, from the Chinese, from the Arabics, from the, from the South. So mm -hmm. these are kind of the tools that I've, uh, that I've made over the years. Um, and I've used, you know, things that are, you know, modern and Western. Like this right here is um, a uh, carabao horn that was, you know, that I cut by hand and sanded it down and I use it as a calligraphy pen. Wow. So, because we use a carabao horn mm -hmm. for our tattoo tools. So oh. I'm using mm -hmm. uh, things that are similar in our other practices mm -hmm. in the uh, calligraphy. 
And these others are to, and I was going to say yeah. engrave. Yeah, to, to, <laughs> right to write. Term? To write. Uh -huh. Yes, to write. I mean, that's what by buying means. Uh -huh. Literally, to write. Oh, okay. To spell. You know so much about this. How did you first get into it? Well, when I was um, I, I was a kid, I used to go to Chinatown and I asked my Lolo, I said, Lolo, what's that writing on the walls on the mm -hmm. signs? And he said, oh, that's how Chinese people write. Mm -hmm. And then I said, how did you write in the Philippines? He said, oh, we write in English. And that just seemed weird to me. And I was really <laughs> young. I was perplexed. But eventually, you know, I was able to discover, discover it while looking through um, an encyclopedia and learn about the Katipunan in an old book. And I saw the Ka uh -huh. sign, right? And then from then on, wow. Um, I brought the uh, the the paper mm -hmm. to uh, to somebody at the uh, this man that was selling uh, books at a Filipino festival, and I asked him, you know, uh, what is this? I thought it was an I. Mm -hmm. I said, what's this I? Is that for independence? Mm -hmm. And he says, no, that's our old uh, alphabet, our old writing. And then from then on, I was just became obsessed with it. And then when I finally got to the Philippines, I was able to get a chart of the, everything. You did go to the Philippines, right? Tell us about yeah. that experience. When was this? Um, it was probably around 95 okay. or so. And um, I, I was supposed to go there just for, you know, maybe vacation and stay there for maybe eight months or so. I ended up staying for 10 years. 10 years? Yes. What did your parents say? Well, <laughs> they, they, go away? <laughs> oh, they followed me. Oh, yeah. okay. But then actually, then they went back to the US one by one. Mm -hmm. And then I was the only one left there. So how was that experience? What did you learn that you wouldn't have learned from books? Oh, it was great. I mean, just about our culture a lot, mm -hmm. just by learning and being there. Um, just about uh, living in Manila, you know, the, 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 the hectic place it is and surviving. Um, but uh, over there, I did a lot of uh, different jobs. You know, I, I DJed, I was in a band. Um, hmm. I did some modeling. I did some TV wow. hosting. I oh, did wow. photography. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I started a business and failed. You know, I did all these things that you know within that span was uh, quite a learning experience. And um, teach us a little about by buy-in. How did you did you learn more about by buy-in when you were in the Philippines, or was it? Yeah. just as difficult yeah I, I learned well I learned it but just from the chart the aesthetics of it meaning like you know this is how the character looks like but in actual practice I didn't um, understand the context on the benefit or the value of it the only value that I had was when um, I would go with my friends to, to the bars and then they would call uh, girls over and they'd say oh Hello. this, this Amboy <laughs> will write your name in mm -hmm. the old alphabet on a napkin but other than that, there wasn't any real value until I moved back to the U.S. And for those who would like to volunteer yes. with Unconference, mm -hmm. what are they to expect? Um, conversations. I mm -hmm. mean, because a lot of people ask a lot of questions. And um, the expectation is, you know, you'll learn like things from project management. You know, we mm -hmm. do a lot of things online um, as well as um, marketing as well, mm -hmm. because it is about just spreading the word of this advocacy. Paano yung medyo mahiyain if it's they're shy mm -hmm. to converse? Oh, okay lang kasi da dati mahiyain ako. So mm -hmm. I, I, I grew up as an introvert. I was very quiet. Really? And then I just, you know, one day just, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. If you really care for this, you have to um, swallow your pride and mm -hmm. be in front of a camera and, you know, you'll have to just do it. There is whether it's through hypnosis or just doing it. You just have to go out just there Just your talk fourth D is due. Do, exactly. Well, Christian, thank you so much for gracing the show. As a parting shot, anong message mo sa ating viewers? Um, the, the message would be that um, the legacy that you leave is your, is your fountain of youth. And if you uh, leave a legacy, you live forever. That's really nice. Well, thank you so much. I thank hope you also. at one point in the future you come back with your unconference group. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you for joining us and have a good weekend. Mm -hmm.